Hello, Hello everybody. everybody. <laughs> so today we are here as we got bombarded by for last three four months after I started the channel and before that also like we had a lot of questions, uh, especially from you. Like, uh, what are the different problems and challenges and other types of questions during a PhD? And you might have seen Nadi because he also co collaborated with me before in some. Uh, videos so he's also going to help because he also got many questions during a, what happens during a PhD and what are the other questions surrounding that so today the whole video will be about those discussions of those questions that we got from you from different channels and also face to face so that's the main purpose of today's meeting so we can start with the first question maybe yeah, yeah, that will be a good idea because yeah. uh, we now all have the opportunity to look at those questions and we can provide you with uh, the specific answers from our kind of perspective and hopefully we can support you and help, can help you in any way so, so everybody knows what it takes to take up a PhD and, and what problems or constraints or whatever you will, uh, will challenge in the near future. So. Let's uh, look at those questions then, I yeah. guess. So let's start with the first question, which is kind of funny and also strange in the sense that uh, I won't name that person, but... The first question was someone from LinkedIn, but I'm not going to name them, obviously. Uh, is it possible to complete a PhD by doing it only two days a month, face-to-face, uh, -face, and rest of the days working from a remote location, uh, maybe some other part of Europe or something like that? Mm -hmm. So what do you think, Nadi? So yeah. I open a calculator and calculate how much time you devote if you do two days a month yeah yeah maybe that's a good idea because then then we get a clear perspective of what it means when you are thinking it's a possibility doing yeah. two days a month of phd because from my own perspective i guess it's not doable because you need contacts you need to be uh, constantly uh, having appointments with your supervisor with your daily supervisor with the people you work with uh, and if you only have two days a month on, on a location uh, for doing that PhD, that it's not manageable. If you like to calculate your appointments and the time you have uh, that you can work on your PhD with your supervisor uh, giving you the, the support you need, no, it's not doable. I, I, I'm doing PhD now for myself two days a week. And that, that's, that seems uh, also like yeah, that, that's, uh, uh, that gives you lack of time. So. <laughs> I, 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 I won't advise you to do it okay, so and of course you, you can say oh I can have my contacts through Skype or, or video conferencing or so but it's, no, it, it's not, not what you should wish for it, it, you need more time it, it's, not, yeah, I I mean, it's like two days a month that's like two <laughs> yeah. I mean let's go into the, the mathematics of it like if you do two days a month Then like uh, 40 hours each week. Yeah, 40 hours each week if you work flat yeah, out. Full-time PhD. Yeah, and full then how much you have like... Uh, yeah, we have 52 weeks. Okay, so in a year you will have like... 52 weeks. Okay, and also I'm putting the four. So this is like the total number of hours yeah. that you need to complete your PhD. Four years. Yeah. Each year has 52 weeks. Yeah. And you have like 40 hours each week. So it's yeah. like eight hours each day. Yeah. Uh, so it is something like this. So for him, yeah. he needs like, let us divide it by uh, the number of hours he's going to spend. So yeah. it's like he's wants to spend 16. Yeah, when you, when you say uh, 8 hours a day, maybe 10 hours a day, uh, if, if you can really stay focused for, for a whole day. Yeah, so if he does like... Two days a month. Yeah. Then it will be like 16, 16, 16 hours a month. Sixteen hours a month. Yeah. Yeah. So if you divide it through sixteen, then you know number of months. Uh. Yeah. 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 Or am I wrong? Yeah. Then you know a number of months. Uh. Yeah. 
because then you need 520 times those two days a month. So Yeah, so <laughs> you need 520 months yeah. to finish your PhD. Yeah. So yeah. that will be ideally equivalent to 43 years. No, it's much older than I am. <laughs> I don't know your age, Sam, but, but, so, but then it takes a lifetime to complete your PhD. Yes. And, and then we have to make the real comment because doing PhD in four years, that's a real stuff uh, uh, planning if you, yeah. think, if, if you want to manage it in, in, uh, in four years. Uh, I, normally we see that most of PhDs don't even finish it in four, uh, four years, need four and a half years or a little more, a little less, but four years is the minimum. So, yeah, so it's like you start your PhD and you never end it. Yeah. So it's something like unfinished business. Yeah, so or, or else if you want to start at 20, then you're finished at 63. So it's also a problem. <laughs> but if you want to, be your guest, do it. <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Goodbye, Goodbye everyone. Goodbye. <laughs> Enjoy the different parts of the videos and please subscribe to the channel and hit the thumbs up button if you like the video and uh, maybe we'll do some other future videos based on the questions and comment below on all the things that we mentioned so that we can make future videos and we know what are your problems. Yeah. If you don't leave the comments, if you remain silent, then yeah. we won't know. So. Yeah. Thank you, Nadi, again for collaborating with this nice. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was a pleasure. <laughs> it will be going on like this yeah. to give you guys all benefits. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Till next time. Peace. Yep.